Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Bonnie. I wanted to make a, a video um, really quickly. I wanted to talk about why narcissists get married so fast. I know um, we are seeing a lot of this happen happening um, more and more. And um, I just wanted to talk about, um, you know, just cover a few things about the way narcissists view it and um, marriage and um, what they tell other people as to, you know, why they um, get married quickly and, you know, how they um, don't want to be judged by it and their ideas about marriage and everything, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I know this one thing that narcissists will say when they do get married really quickly. Um, oh, you know, it's love at first sight. And we're just like, love at first sight, really? <laughs> you know, because you see them move on so quickly from one partner to the next to the next to the next and um they are really you know narcissism um is built on like a a a layer of protection so they always have to throw um people for a loophole you know they always have to um justify their actions with you know with, with in weird ways like um they'll say love at first sight right and we all know that it's like it's kind of like a a fairy tale, like something like in literature. You know, you think about love at first sight. You're thinking about um, a person just having a a really extreme uh, romantic attraction for a you know a stranger, somebody that they don't really know like that. They haven't really lo known long, and they don't know anything about. But a narcissist will tell you that this is why they're getting married to the new supply because. It's love at first sight, which, you know, it's like it's like fairy tale, mystical, because a lot of people today we, you know, um, in research, it shows that people normally it's more common to get, to get married within the first two to five years of getting to know someone, which is absolutely, I would say, um, in a lot of ways, more um, better because you have to um, you have to pretty much sit there and understand that person you have to understand their interest you know you want to get to know their families you want to get to you know fall in love with the person you know and um I think that takes a little time you know I I, I think that takes time but um narcissists they like to again justify their actions and throw people for a loophole with you know with things like that just so um they can protect themselves it's like a turtle in a shell like they don't want to be judged. We all know that they don't want to be criticized, but they don't mind judging and bullying and criticizing others, you know. So um, it's, it's very interesting. So, um, yeah, they um, they what they pretty much do when they get married really fast. They um, they don't know the new supply. They don't know much about the new supply. All they did was throw a lot of tests out there. We know they really um, they really like throwing test 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 people they even test their old supply their new supply um and it's all about if you you know you pass their test you know their tests are um really meant to to make you or to break you and um so they may test the new supply just to see if she's going to be obedient if she's going to listen to their rules um listen to their um their ideas, ideologies, um, any beliefs that they may have. They want to see if the new if they can manipulate the new supply into believing um and and trusting them. You know, they want to see how much how far the new supply will go. And if you do that really, really quickly without knowing much about the narcissist, then you're really gonna be on their good side because they don't want you to really know much about them. They they live in a shell like they're supposed to know everything about you and your life, but they um really don't want you to know much about their past. And they and they want to move really, really quickly. It's real. um It's really strange. And, um you know, the, the reason, again, that I um believe they get married mainly one of the main reasons is to get revenge on, on an ex, you know, spouse or partner. I think that revenge for them is very, very important. Um, they really always feel like they've been wronged by someone and they, they want to control the way um, life works, the way this world works. They 
feel as though they always have to be in control. That's what, why they're so controlling. It's almost like a a godlike mentality. Um, instead of you know believing in um, you know um, the higher power and just trusting you know um, that things are going to work out for you if you put your energy into the things that you're supposed to be doing out here, right? You know, you put your energy and your time into doing the right things, then things are supposed to work out. And even, even if you have a few setbacks, it still should, you know, you still should progress if you believe, right? But narcissists are, um, they kind of don't believe things are going to go the way that they want them to go. So, you know, they try to control every aspect of their lives. So they kind of um, want to get revenge on people. They want to punish people. They want people to um, fall for them really quickly and they want to hurry up and move things and progress things at their own pace the way they want it want it to go so getting revenge on the ex-spouse is um to them is very satisfying because if you know it, it really doesn't matter how um the relationship ended in many ways but sometimes yeah actually sometimes it does because if you discarded the narcissist because you were fed up and tired of their ways and their abuse abusive behavior um, they want to punish you. They don't, it, it may have, you know, it throws them off when somebody discards them because they lost that control. They didn't know it was going to happen and they hate being out of control of situations. So, um, they have to, um, they get obsessed, you know, that's what really is that that's what, um, a lot of people have a hard time, um, digesting about them, how obsessed they are with punishing um, their exes, they really make it, uh, an agenda and which they put so much time and so much energy into that. It's just, it's just unbelievable. It's heartbreaking to know that somebody has to, um, target you and, and as an enemy and, um, is going to do everything on their mind or everything in their power to make sure you, you suffer and you're, that you're miserable. It, it, it really is, um, sadistic sadistic um behavior and is very very toxic very hard to digest for um you know the people that survived them their victims you know it's very hard to know that they will actually go as far to do something as um you know serious as marrying someone else to to punish you because this is how this goes down if you um if you share children with them or you're going through a divorce they usually want the upper hand in anything. So they may, they will marry very quickly. And I mean, like within the first few months of knowing someone just to have an appearance of a, of a family man, a, a vulnerable person that just wants love and peace and harmony. And that's how it comes off in front of everybody else, especially, uh, especially legal professionals. And, um, so they fall really quickly to, um, to have that image of a, of a good, um, husband or a great wife. And, um, you know, they, they just really go to extreme limits to protect their image and image and their money and anything. They don't want to lose, you know? Um, so yeah, they, they, and, and then, and then they didn't want to see the looks on their, um, their exes faces. Cause you probably didn't know they were married and you're like, wow, we're not even, you know, we just got divorced like yesterday or, you know, we just had a small child. Like, wow. Like, what is this? You know, what is this? How, how could, how could this happen? Right. It's just, it's just a shame. And also, you know, to add on top of that, you know, they really have a hard time being by the, by themselves, being alone, you know, abusers have to have somebody around them to abuse them. It, it doesn't work if, you know, they, it doesn't work if they don't have anybody around to abuse they have to have somebody. They have a hard time with, um, they have to project their emotions and, um, everything onto somebody. So they, they can't be alone. It's almost like, you know, they really feel like it, it, the way they live their lives, it seems like they don't think they're going to be here long because, you know, being this world long because they're rushing, rushing, you know, everything's a rush. It's a rush. It's so fast and, um, so calculated, you know, and they have to, um, it has to benefit them, benefit them. It has to, you know, that's why it's always a motive to every single thing that they do, you know? So it's like rushing, rushing, rushing. Everything is a rush with them, you know? Um, it's a thrill also, you know, of course they, you know, they get off just 
hurting people, um, trying to control every aspect of their, of their lives again, you know, and also with the new supply, it helps the narcissist, uh, of course, to, um, if the new supplies, you know, going to sit in the house and babysit the kids that they have with other women, you know, to cook, to clean, you know, and, and in some cases, depending on what type of narcissist it is, um, if it's like a malignant narcissist, um, low functioning, you know, that's somebody that, um, is very, very cruel, very sadistic. And, um, if they're low functioning, they, they, meaning they can't, they don't have much control for too long. They, they're going to, um, lose control quicker than a lot of the other, um, types of narcissists lose control quicker within their tempers. Um, you know, that's why a lot of them have criminal records and, and backgrounds and past that they try to hide passes that they try to hide. They don't want nobody to know because they, it's really harder for them to keep control. They try, but they, they just lose control. You know, they, they really are more, um, more so prone to, you know, hardcore drugs and, um, you know, heavy, heavy drinking and, um, you know, and it, um, they, they lose control in their, um, in their personal lives, um, as far as like, you know, their jobs and their money and things like that, they really have a hard time keeping it together. So they would, they may need someone that is more, um, you know, more successful than them. So they would look to date, um, higher up, you know, like a woman, a male, a, a low functioning malignant narcissist would try to look for a woman that may make more money than them, you know, just so they can have more, um, you know, more financial, you know, gain, you know, it's a gain to them. And, uh, um, a, a mid range narcissist, maybe a covert male mid mid range narcissist may have, um, a great job, a great career. He, he may get a woman that may not have as much to offer him just so he can control and abuse her. You know, he, and, and a lot of them covert, um, narcissists, they don't mind. I'm dating women with a, a lot of kids. It's just a lot of control and, they know the woman can't leave and, you know, um, abuse, um, financial abuse, emotional abuse. It, it just depends. Um, they all have preferences and they may have, um, you know, they don't mind attaching themselves to, um, to broken families. And, um, you know, it's an ego thing for them too. You know, they know that if they get this woman's away from her husband, it, you know, and they could do that. It's just the fact that they did that and she left her husband for them. It's a big, um, ego stroke for them. You know, they really love, um, boosting their ego because they're arrogant and they're prideful. And, um, so they, so they get, um, new supply. Like I said, it, it's for a wide variety of reasons. Again, you know, babysitting, cooking, cleaning, money, sex, you know, um, so, um, they eventually, eventually they're going to lose interest in you, um, in the new supply. It, when they, when they, when they stop making them feel special. The narcissist is all about feeling special, showing off, you know, they're going to take the new supply around the families, around the enablers, um, around the flying monkeys. They need everybody to see, look what I have. You know, it's like a shiny little toy for them. You know, look what I have. Look how, how good I am. You know, that that's how, you know, they are so arrogant. They always have to show off. They always have to bring these new supply around and people see them they're looking like wow is this girl really stupid you know does she know that he just left the other girl like like you know just a few months ago and you two are now so serious like wow it, it just blows people minds just looking at it, it it's just like wow but you know the th the thing that the new supply doesn't understand is that they really don't get that they are being used that they are part of a game um, they don't get it. The narcissist, um, they only have the narcissist story, their side of the story. So whatever the narcissist is telling them about the old supply, that's what they're going to believe. And the narcissist has tested them over and over, over again to test their loyalty, to test they, um, how obedient they are to them, how much they listen. So the new supply is all for the narcissist, you know, um, it's, 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 it's something else. It really is. Um, so, you know, the narcissists, they love to go after people that, um, that they feel need them, you know, um, again, you know, even if they're a low functioning narcissist that doesn't have much money, doesn't have much to offer those type of individuals go, um, and really 
they might not have nothing to offer much to offer physically or materialistically, but they'll go and um give women a lot of um intellect and you know um intellectual conversations and you know um sway women that way with like oh I'm so um godly I know everything I can help you and you know I'm always here they try to you know know a little bit about everything you know it, it would take a really vulnerable person they, that's why they go after really vulnerable people so you're gonna you know they go after people that they feel um need them for something you know if you don't need them it's really hard for them to trap you you know it, even if, um you know like I said a, a higher functioning narcissist who does make good money it's still going to go after a woman that needs needs him may not a woman that may not make much that may not be um as successful or accomplished as they are so that's how they can abuse her just like that movie um invisible man you know uh he's a very intelligent science scientist who um really dated a lower functioning woman who who you know who um did um who did gain a lot from living that lifestyle with him. So he just, he never had nobody leave him. And, um, he just kind of really went after her because he, he, he lost control. He he never had that happen. So he put on that suit and still abused her and people didn't believe her. And that's, you know, that's narcissism right there. You know, you're getting abused and nobody sees it, you know, in some ways, cause some, not all narcissists um, are physically abusive. So they don't believe you. And even the ones that are physically abusive, it's still hard for them to believe that it happened because they weren't there because the person was so what? They're charming, right? So, um, you know, the thing is that um, narcissists, you know, once you get with them, they find out you need them. They're going to um, break you down slowly, but surely. So you don't have any, um, you know, any confidence in yourself and you don't even have any respect for yourself. You're going to like... You know how um, you ever heard that somebody, I, I don't know, in the movies, they'll say, um, you know, a guy may yell at a woman and say, you know, get down on the floor and crawl like a dog or bark or, you know, um, it, it's just like, wow. You know, not saying that a narcissist would go that far, but some of them do. Like you you won't even respect yourself anymore. You, you won't even know who you are anymore because you've never um, been treated that way. So, you'll, you know, just the disrespect that they will give you. And that's, you know, emotional abuse, mental abuse. You be like, wow, I can't, you know, I, it never happened before. So in many cases, some people don't know what to do if, if, um, they feel like this person has, you know, a good side to them also. So they're trying to balance out the fact that what they've seen, but that was just a facade, you know, the narcissist is really a, a wicked, um, very evil person and any good thing that they've done for you. It's just, um, it's just, um, that's just the false part of themselves, you know? So a lot of people that never been treated that way and don't know anything about narcissism, just, um, they, they stay there in that toxic, um, that toxic partnership or that toxic marriage, you know, marriage is supposed to be about, um, partnership, um, compromise, compromising things, you know, growing together, um, trusting each other and committing to each other, you know, being, um, loyal and learning, you know, so the narcissist is, you know, presenting things that um they're about that right there but they're not because they can't really commit to anything they're very impulsive individuals they're too impulsive too lazy and too um selfish to to give all of those things you know now they can promise you anything you know but they're too selfish to give all those things those things those things to somebody you know again you know, in marriage, a lot of people get married because they um, have the expectations of promising, you know, to, to build a life together. That's what you think is going to happen, you know, having a home and, um, of course, pro providing int intimacy to each other. But, you know, it's not easy, realistically, you know, nobody's saying that marriage is easy or, or perfect, but um, the narcissist is, is not genuine about these things. And um, they're, they're very fake, you know, um, they're, they may put, you know, um, a little time and energy into, into the marriage, the idea of marriage, but they're not going to give it their all. And they're going to break every rule because they, they have a godlike mentality. They feel like, um, they feel like they can break things because they going to have so many different, um, like webs up to their beliefs. It's like, like a spider web, you know, how it's like such a big complex, um, circle with so many different lines like a narcissist may feel like 
yeah, I married you, but if I'm not happy and satisfied, um, you know, with the int- intimacy or sexually, then I I can go out and cheat because I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy with this part of our relationship right now. It was fun at first, but now it's not fun. So I can go out and, to have fun because this is not what I signed up for. But you don't know that that way. You don't look at it. You you may look at it and, um, and your beliefs may be we're married and there's no stepping outside of the marriage. But they have so many different um you know, different ways that they think about things and to get themselves to do, you know, to get themselves a way out so they can do the things that they want to do. Um, so, you know, um, also what inter inter what is so interesting about narcissists is that they put so much time and energy into hurting others. Um, you know, again, it's just absolutely hard to, um, to understand, you know, because of their emotional abuse they don't seem to, um, want to accept, um, the things that they do wrong to other people. They don't seem to want to accept it or look at it that way, but they do abuse people because of the the stuff that has inside of them, whatever happened to them in their childhoods, this is what they live for. Um, just that negative negativity, that toxic energy, they're going to, um, pass it off into somebody else. They have to, you know, it's like a spider. They have to inject that poison into somebody else. So that's why they really can't be by themselves. You know, they have to unleash it. It's like a spider that has poison. And, you know, we always wondering what that poison there for, you know, for them to, I guess, protect themselves and to kill their, um, you know, predators or, you know, or even their prey, you know? So that's what the narcissist is, you know, definitely a predator, you know, um, preying on people and, um, using people. So the marriage is, is, is a phony. It's a phony marriage. It's, um, it's not a real love connection there. It's just a narcissist playing games and using somebody and they them want not want to be alone and that they want to have somebody there to, um, to bully, to hurt and to destroy, you know, and they all, they all know that it's a ride to their own. They know it's going to end. So that's why they go into a marriage with their own, um, their own motives. They go in there um, to show off, um, you know, that's how they operate. They want to show off to their enablers. They want to show off to their coworkers. And, you know, they want people to look at them as this um, this big, you know, um, you know, that, that's that e- ego. They, they're driven by the ego, this big, um, you know, awesome person that is just all of these blessings and things are coming to them. But it's really not a blessing, it, you know, behind closed doors, if you only really knew um, what the new supply was dealing with, you know, they start the abuse in many cases almost immediately, but the new supply doesn't understand narcissism, um, doesn't know, understand about emotional abuse. So they, um, really overlook a lot of things, you know, um, marriage again, and, you know, a lot of people, um, view marriage as, you know, something that comes from the hands of God, you know, um, especially, you know, religion, you know, um, but for narcissists, it, it doesn't mean anything to them. It doesn't mean anything to them. They, they could care less. They're just doing it, um, to get revenge on, um, someone else and to drive their ego, you know, their ego driven and they don't want to be by themselves. They can't be alone because they have to have somebody to intact their abuse on too. So, um, you know, but in, in our society, honestly, today, you know, for even people that may not be narcissists, there's other people that are close, but a lot of people do get married, um, for so many different reasons that are not about love. You know, some people can get married, um, you know, for status or tradition or, um, you know, forced by other people or, you know, um, security. But the thing is that, um, narcissists, um, they're, they're too selfish um, they don't, um, they got a twisted view, a really twisted view of, of marriage. So it's not, um, it's not godly what they think about marriage and why they're married. It's not a godly or religion, religious, um, reason or, you know, even the right reason (laughs) It's it's really mainly about, um, status, material things, um, and to have constant, a constant source of supply, um, that adrenaline rush, they always need that. So, um, that's why, in my opinion, they get married um, so quickly to the new supply. So, guys, tell me what you think about this video. Um, just like this video, comment, and um, 
subscribe guys be sure to cut on your notifications so you'll know when i'm uploading these videos though but i will talk to you guys later